Hey everybody, this is John for MTG Nexus with a little bit of a small channel update slash a new video. So, new, new formatting, we have had burn videos on Mondays and we'll have the Phoenix videos on Fridays. A little bit more longer play videos, um, doing leagues or more matches, so we're not doing short plays on those days. I figure there's a little bit of content gap here in the middle of the week, and while I do have content going out on the Standard Nexus MTG channel every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., a lot of you aren't here for Standard, you're here for Modern, and trying to both help my own play and to help everybody else's play a little bit, I'm going to be choosing a particular event or particular gameplay idea from one of the videos either in the current week or in a past week uh, highlighting either um, good habit good play habits or play lines from either ourselves or our opponents if they've made some interesting play lines that um, for instance a couple weeks ago I had a blue white opponent that played a really good play line I might cover that in one of the future videos but this week we're gonna take a look at playing to your outs and sometimes not necessarily con conceding in matches but way too early like I was considering doing. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, leaving a constructive comment down below as we aim to become the most informative lightning bolt based modern MTG channel on YouTube. Roll it! <laughs> So here we are taking a look at the third game of our match against Eldrazi Tron, which is a difficult matchup for Burn. Um, his hand is a high risk, high reward kind of hand against a deck that plays Chalice of the Void frequently on one, or 4-1 on turn two, especially what they're going to be on the play. On um, this hand, obviously has the Goblin Guide, which that's what I consider one of the best starts for Burn. Um, having one of your one-drop creatures, especially against a deck that cannot generally kill creatures very effectively outside of cards like Dismember, which if they're paying four mana, to, four life to kill your two-drop or your one-drop, your one-drop's definitely doing its job. Uh, beyond that, we have three other cards that could potentially get trapped in our hand if we have Lightning Bolt. We also don't have either Cinder Vines or Green Source to go with Cinder Vines because our first fetch lane will have to grab Lightning Helix or Boros Charm if we don't happen to draw... Uh, Sunbake Canyon as one of our draw steps in the meantime, but I end up keeping this hand because it has a fast clock It's generally a turn four goldfish and could easily be a turn gold three goldfish with the right draw steps like another Another creature into a land would very quickly make this a turn three goldfish so Definitely a hand worth keeping but mindful of the fact that we can easily get locked out by chalice um, fast forward a little bit and we do the thing, they end up having Chalice on one. Um, so our hand is a bunch of one drop spells. So at this point I'm very strongly considering uh, conceding especially to this TKS that's about to drop. So basically they had their deck, deck's best start against Burn. Turn two Thought Not, or turn two uh, Chalice, turn three Thought Not Seer on the play. Um, we're going to take Boros Charm here. So, when I talk about playing to your outs, at this point we have 50 cards in our deck. So, we have a 1 in 25 chance of drawing Cinder Vines per draw step. So, what I'm going to do this time is obviously I have one fetch land here. We need to unlock my Lightning Helix. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack with Goblin Guide. Try to get him to block and Lightning Helix this. This does accomplishes two things. Number one, it gets pressure off the board. And number two, gets us one more draw step closer to that two card combo we need to win the game. Or at least get back into the game. So while I'm giving up the ability to go to the face, the reality is we're not going to kill our opponent with the resources we currently have as long as all of our one drops are locked. So step one, we draw the green source. And even more crucially, this makes it important for us because the way our opponent sequences things, we actually would have lost to Cinder Vines before we had the ability to cast it here because they have a second Thought Knots here. So our opponent basically had almost the nuts against us. Like, the only draw better might have been, um, like, Chalice into Thought Knots here and into 
uh, Reality Smasher. And Reality Smasher pressuring us here would have been very, very rough. Uh, drew the Cinder Vines, so we hit the 2 out of 48, which is 1 out of 24, which is basically a little bit better than 4% on that draw step. So the odds may be 10% that we hit something like that, maybe lower even. So we go ahead, grab the Stomping Grounds, um, play out the Cinder Vines here, don't crack it immediately in case our opponent decides they want to play any additional spells or anything. Uh, granted, the only spells they have at this point in their deck are probably additional chalices, maybe another Mind Stones, the Expedition map they can't currently cast. Uh, opponent goes to attack with their Thought Not Seer, play their Walking Ballista. Um, you know, definitely playing to the outs. I mean, this is a game that we were probably sub 10% to win at some point, and now we have a chance over a couple of turns if our opponent can't present a fast enough clock to burn them out. We already have 12 points of burn in hand, 14 if you include the Cinder Vines blowing up the Chalice. Here comes the Walking Ballista. Love the art on that promo Walking Ballista. You know, end of turn, pop the pop the, the chalice. So, gotta do some quick math here. Um, we could just go spike, 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 in case they have another chalice to avoid locking ourselves out. But the thing here is, so, opponent has four, six power in play, eight damage total, with Walking Ballista able to shoot for two. Uh, as things sit, they can pump this once, so they can do 3, 6, 10 damage next turn. We're 13, still no danger, although there are some doubt, some outs like Reality Smasher that would put us in a spot where we'd have to bolt that, and if we're bolting Walking Ballista, we're likely losing the game anyway. However, I decide to go Spike, Spike, Hold Up, Bolt. So, that's what I'm running through in the game itself, was add the actual math that I was just describing. Um, understanding whether we were dead or not. Reality Smasher is basically the one card that we can beat, but we can't. We don't die to it next turn with the ability to bolt this, but we'd have to have rip another top deck here. We'd have to hit either one of our remaining bolts, one of our remaining lava spikes, or one of our remaining skewer the critics. Um, no other card there in that spot would save our bacon. Uh, I guess technically path would also buy us another turn um, so there are there are several cards that were outs to buying us another turn because we could go uh, both the ballista go to 11 down to two no I guess I guess it would literally need to be another one mana burn spell there so even holding up the bolt here might not have ended up being correct so do do the thing was complaining about our top decks which admittedly we were very very lucky but we did play to maximize that out with they hit natural Tron here so they pump the ballista we let that go because even if they pump it twice this goes to four um, four eight damage sorry Is that correct four eight yeah that'd be Put us to one, which isn't relevant. There's no one damage thing out of a colorless deck, usually speaking, other than walking ballistas. And those require two mana, which throws off the math a little bit. Actually, no, maybe what another walking ballista was a reason not to was a reason to potentially bolt here. Because if they do have another ballista here, we're just dead. So that would put us to four yeah. Walking ballista would have been an out there. But I guess we really can't play around that. So put ends up going GG question mark. Yep. And that's game. We bold our opponent and spike our opponent. We end up top taking a skull crack, which isn't relevant. And that was the game. So lesson to be learned there. Sometimes even in hopeless situations, if you're not going to be dead in the next turn cycle or so sometimes it pays to take a draw step or two play to your outs um i know i've been guilty at times of not always playing to my outs of not always uh playing through the games i've had i know personally like i'll get frustrated and just concede a game or 
A lot of people mentioned that if I would have taken this line, I would have won the game. Sometimes some of those lines are very complicated, and I just flat out don't see them. You know, one of the advantages of doing the pre-recorded content is it's a little bit more easy to concentrate, or easier to concentrate. Um, I like I like streaming. I like interacting with people, but gameplay suffers when you're streaming because um, you're distracted. And we as human beings are not designed to multitask as well. And um, so mistakes are made. Sometimes it helps in terms of like play lines being pointed out, but a lot of times it distracts the streamer. So there is advantages and disadvantages to doing the pre-recorded stuff. Um, one of the advantages is generally the plays, a, the play quality is a little bit better. The explanations are a little bit more crisp, but there's a little bit lacking of personal interaction there. So I miss streaming some, but due to due to scheduling, due to uh, trying to include other things. I'm working on a lot of different things. I'm working on getting back into studying for the CPA exam. I am also doing more more magic pursuits outside of the channel. Like I'm trying to do more local tournaments. Um, in July, I'm going to make a concentrated effort to try to hit Mythic um, Top 1000 to try to compete for the Mythic Championships through Arena. So there's going to be a lot of other stuff going on, but I do want to continue to bring you guys quality content. That's why I'm going to be aiming for three times a week. We're going to be doing the two for sure. The, th the Wednesday release is going to be the one that's kind of up in the air. I'll be doing that at 10 a.m. as well on the weeks that I do it. I will be doing definitely on the standard channels. On, the mo on this channel, I will be trying to do a gameplay video, a breakdown like this every week. That way we're you know, trying to do... A good balance of content with Burn and Phoenix. Uh, the reason I chose Burn and Phoenix uh, is they're decks I own in paper, and they're both decks I enjoy playing. I tried the Blue White X control decks. Um, I'm not personally a fan of the playstyle, either in Modern or Legacy. So I ended up selling pieces of the Blue White, the Just Guy deck I own in paper. Um, I kept several of the key pieces to pick up as a Phoenix. I also have the ability to flip that into Grixis Death Shadow should Faithless Looting or something get banned. So should Faithless Looting get banned, we'll probably switch over to Grixis Death Shadow content. Um, if you're liking other burn content, I know Andrew Day2 Dryden is going to be setting up his channel sometime in the next month or so. He's currently still on Nikachu, but I know they're getting ready to split ways. So. I really want to help the burn community in general, so it's not him versus us, us versus him. I would really like to see, once his channel's up and running, anybody in this audience going over and supporting his channel and helping it grow. Um, I think it would be a tremendous asset for all of us to have multiple burn content providers um, growing the community, helping new players, helping veteran players, and the same thing with the Phoenix decks. I know he's playing on doing some Phoenix content from watching his videos, so feel free to check him out once his videos get up and running. Um, I think it would be great to help both communities grow. And that's going to be about all we have for the video. Um, let me know what you think about this uh, particular play format and about the intro that played in between my short explanation and then the actual content for the video whether it's too distracting whether you like it or don't like it as always this has been john for mtg nexus don't forget to like comment and subscribe and don't forget to check out our discord the link is down below